Well, welcome all of you to my third panel uh, to the art of writing, plot design. Well, pony plots can be quite soft or quite fluffy, nice and round, different kind of plots. Um, I am Lethrael, the current writer of Pinkie Pie Adopts a Philly, Two Guys Adopts a Philly, and A Philly Adopts a Family. <laughs> So you can see my pattern of story choice in that kind of matter. But I also tend to read a lot of fanfics in English, at least. And I have done another two-parter, actually, uh, one to scenery, one to character design. But plot design for the future and plot design for now is the most important part of storytelling. I think it's the one thing to rule all things. Because if you don't have a story, you don't have characters, you don't have scenery, you do have actually nothing to tell anything or anybody at this. We have in storytelling five E's. First, inclusion, introspection, insert, idealization, and idea. The most important thing is idea, because if you don't have any idea what your story is about, you don't have a story. So, introduction. First, the first question you must ask you, why do you want to write? Do you want to write to tell a story or do you want to write to express yourself? If you want to write to express yourself, that's fine. You can do whatever you want, but to tell a story is quite different. Um, to express yourself means you want to put you into the story. The story doesn't need any kind of author. The author is part of the story, but not the main focus of it. You can at least try to distance yourself from your story, to put yourself out of the focus and focus more on the characters or the scenery or the uh, combined effort of both. But the author is the last picture you must address to see what kind of story do I want to write, what kind of story is this story. What do you want to express when you want to express yourself? It's fine, I also tend to do that a lot in my story, but I don't write the story slowly uh, only to express myself. I write the story to see opportunities, to, to change characters, to change histories, to change stories. Um, the conflict between story and moral is very important. If you want to tell a moral or teach so far a moral, you want to hammer in the moral into the story in one way or another. You can be very subtle, like uh, you can slightly address the moral, you can dancing or prancing around the moral. The moral is a very, very difficult task to embody into your story. A moral is the main focus if you want to address the reader directly. A moral can be difficult to understand, it can be like the death of the author uh, stated that you have another moral than is presented into in the story in all at all because I want to write a story about a please come in we have started already but please come in and take a seat um, I want to start I want to make a moral like uh, a filly needs a whole village to raise needs a whole village to be an round up adult, but my readers only say, see, uh, it's a story about a family who is in trouble. 
and the story needs a focus. If you don't have a focus, you have uh, a mishmash of understandably um, simple parts of uh, character or scenery. And the one thing I um, would I would say that is this helps my story grow is a one sentence summary. If I want to write a one uh, one shot, I try to use one sentence summary to sum it up in one nice cozy little sentence. Like um, I will show some examples about this kind in a different style. I choose episode titles from My Little Pony and try to sum it up in one sentence. Um, where we could agree on or not. Um, how to start writing? It is quite easy. It is uh, grab a pen, write it down, and you have a story. But do you really have a story, or do you have a combined list of things you want to address? Or, uh, or uh, I change between German and English. <laughs> or do you have a slowly scenery of one thing? Would that? Would isn't? Sorry. Hmm? Or do you have one scenery who just floated around in an empty corner without a story? So, start first steps. We have synopsis or one sentence summary. This is the one I would prefer or um, see in many, many stories more. Why is a good plot so important? Beside the joke, um, a good plot is that what draws the reader in. A good plot is relatable for the reader, is a thing the reader can enjoy in certain areas or be, feel sad about in certain areas. Um, the one thing plots always addresses is old wine in new skins, meaning you can't have a story that is original. Mean, uh, in that kind of sentence, I mean every story is told long time ago, but your perspective makes it different. Your perspective makes it unique. And a unique story is a story who take this old wine and make a new skin out of it, or around it. You can address a character in a different manner. You can change positions. You can do whatever you want with characters. You can do whatever you want with scenery. But the old telling, old wine in new skins, means you have to look out for old stories who are addressing this too like Hercules, the one and own, the, the chosen one, the hero, or Oedipus, the damned. If you have any kind of those stories, you can read those stories, take what you want from it, and change it, twist it around a little bit. Um, a tale as old as times, fairy tales. If you want to read, you should read fairy tales to understand what kind of story is that? What kind of purpose does it serve? A fairy tale is always a moral story. So a fairy tale without a moral is not a fairy tale. It is a legend or a nice little thing you read. But a moral on a fairy tale is important. Trust the elder, um, look out for others, be patient or be good is a moral in fairy tales. Myth and epics are a little bit different. Myths are also moral stories, but with a twist. You have the, the, the vicious evil who are approaching the hero, and you have to fight it. In fairy tales, it isn't always fighting or the, the great heroes. There are normal peoples. In myth, there are epic. There are great people, heroes of all kinds. How to draw inspiration. Everything can inspire you. Everything. A small horse, uh, a small dragon, or a butterfly, a flower, um, a pie. 
everything can impress, inspire. Um, again, the one sentence plots I will gloss over. Flaws and merits. A flaw and a merit in plots is very, very difficult to spot. If you have a, a plot like, I want to write an engaging love story between three different characters, you will always end up in a love triangle. And a love triangle is nice if you do it justice. If you don't, you have a kind of, oh, that happens because, and that happens because, but it's in, uninterest uninteresting because it happens so often in Hollywood. It happened quite so often in Hollywood. We can agree that a nice change of pace is the last pair. It is a nice change of pace of a typical Romeo and Juliet story with a twist because they are falling in love over a long period of time. Um, modern myth. This is quite different. You have already heard of the Slender Man, the Slender Mare in that case, or of other modern myth. You can do this and pick it and put it into a classical story to change the subject, to reverse the, the origin of the story. The Chosen One. <laughs> Who doesn't know that? The Chosen One is the simplest story you can ever written. Pick one hero, um, Mary Sue, Gary Sue, Pony Sue, everything you want to have on a hero, take it. Make it a great story, but show that you have understanding of the chosen one type. A chosen one is a hero because he is a hero, not that he choose to be a hero, for example. You can choose to be a hero and can be the chosen one because of your choose, like Harry Potter. Harry Potter is a great example for the chosen one who has choose to be a hero to be a hero. So there is an, an interwhirling thing around this. The loner, the outcast, everything a brownie could be. <laughs> well, <laughs> that was obviously a joke. Uh, we are not loner, we are loner in a group of loners. Um, the loner is a very, very interesting part of society and the stories of a loner is also a very, very interesting part of society. If you be an outcast, like, for example, the Hunchback of Notre Dame, you have a very unique perspective of society. You can put your perspective of society and show the reader what perspective you have. But if you do this with your as character, you don't make a difference. You m just make a story about you. The story about you is an autobiography, but I don't choose to write autobiographies because they are quite boring, as I can tell from my school experience. Um, an, autobiography, an autobiography suffers from one thing and the only thing that is important, your perspective. Your perspective matters the most, if the only. I choose to try to write different perspectives. We need a hero. It's the chosen one reversed. You can do it like a town having a problem to conquer, to, to, to address, but no one wants to be a hero. So they are looking for a hero, but don't realize that they have a hero inside who can take this threat ahead. This is a little thing I would do. Synopsis. I hope it's readable. The first view of the story. You, if you're writing a story, you can choose to put, every, put the first scene out as quick as possible to establish a character to everything what you want. Or you can take a step back, relax, see what your first idea is, and toss it completely away to settle for another. 
The synopsis helps you with that, that kind of organization because um, you can take the character, inspect it a little bit, cut off a little bit of pieces of them, take the rays away and put in the, the problems he have into an earth pony, into an pegasus, into an unicorn, even into an alicorn if you want to, or into a changeling. The same problem a unicorn has with friends who doesn't answer his letter takes a different turn if you choose another species. A pegasus would fly through them and tell them, what the hey are you talking about? I have written letters to you. Wait, why do I have written letters to you when I can fly? Never mind. The different approaches of the story changes if you have a different race, if you have a different character type. If, a low, if an introvert tries to be the hero of a story, he would do it in a very, very calm down way, in a very, very step behind the scene way. But a hero, an actual extrovert, would charge forward and try to make this probably my problem. Um, this synopsis tells a story in a very, very short sentence. Um, the one little filly tried to impress her hero. Which kind of story would that be? Um, Sleepless in Ponyville, of course. Uh, okay. I will glass over that. This is short and sustenant. Uh, the moral. Well, good read. Oh, dearest. Ah, oh, the goal of a story. I'm so sorry. Tone, etc. It's, yeah. Um, well, good. I will, I have glanced over the moral, the tone of a story. A tone of a story is, can you read that? There is tone. <clears throat> the tone of a story is the one thing you want to address to the reader early. If you have a blood fest of shit and crazy pony who are hammering down the enemy, the, the, the enemy with blunt weapons and bows and grenades, <laughs> you can also have a very sweet love story who are just butterflies, uh, a picnic or um, everything fine and beauty like Rainbow Dash's nightmares. So you can, you have to address this to the reader early. The reader must know what kind of story you are writing or what they are reading. And so if you have a dramatic story, you should address it first in a summary or a synopsis or you should push the story in that direction fast. What have we asked? Ah, oh, yeah, the, the, the storytelling roots. The roots of a storytelling is a campfire. Every story was first introduced by sitting around a campfire. It's the oldest way to educate, it's the oldest way to moralize, it's the oldest way to make ponies or people happy or feel safe. It is the first way to scare them in a story way. In the real way, a giant bear would be scarier than a story about a giant bear who can eat you alive. But this first addressing of a story makes the theater, makes the point that we are writing so much difficult because the imagination there was not overcrowded by pictures of media. When I say bloody battle, uh, every one has a different point of view of that. If they say bloody battle, they don't even know what they experience about it. We are experienced so much. We have experienced so much media and that makes it difficult to write because I have a vision of a character I have a vision of a scenery and if I try to embody it like a story in 
cinema, a story on TV, you try to write a whole bunch of descriptions to mimic that experience. Don't do it. Just say it was a lovely day. Every reader will picture another day, but they are all similar. They are nice. I tend to scratch out as much description as possible. There are many types of description that are possible, um, that are needed, that are, that are needed, so you can scratch the use of, this is a red pony if you are describing um, Brayburn. You can describe Brayburn like, it's Brayburn. That's it. Everyone has a vision of the character already. If you have an OC, you have to describe them in fir at first. If you are following the description around like, this is an earth pony with uh, brown hair um, around 20 feet tall, um, you are bore out the characters and the readers. Um, old wine and new skins, the fairy tale connections. Like fairy tales in fiction and fairy tales here, we have a uh, retrading or rebranding of fairy tales as old, as Disney-like, and as easy as possible. Fairy tales aren't easy. Fancy tales, fancy tales, <laughs> fancy, fancy tales would also work. Fairy tales aren't easy. Fairy tales are more and more difficult the more we are growing up. A fairy tale around the evil witch of um, Sleeping Beauty changed into a story about a hurt soul and a battle um, around nature and um, might. But everything has been told before. I mean, the, the loner, the outcast, the, the hero. We have so many hero stories around the world in myth, in, in fairy tales, heck, even Disney called one story simply twice. The, the, the Hamlet story of Lion King is brought back to our all memory by a terrible, terrible real life edition. Um, angles and interpretation means you have to choose another angle of a story or another interpretation of the story to make it interesting. You can use the same idea over and over, but if you do so, change the perspective. Um, I think the best part of the new real life or real cinema was Sleeping Beauty and the, the twist of the fairy is really a nice fairy, a nice bat influence, so for the first part. Um, something new and something old is the best short description of that, because something new and something old means you have a archetype that is brash, bold, and loudmouth like Rainbow Dash, and you can pitch it like a little bit and choose to make her love of reading an episode. That was a great idea to flesh out the character in a different light. You don't have to choose to run it with your archetype the whole time. You can change it, you can bend it around your will while you are the author. Your will changed the story. And if you don't want to do that, it's fine, but Changing a story to adapt more into one little aspect is a nice touch. It's always a nice touch. Good endings versus a real life endings. This is strangely enough for fairy tales and for us as bronies. We tend to write good endings. We want to make them happy. The ponies should not perish or should not suffer, or they should get a nice, cozy feeling around us. But 
real life doesn't end that well. Real life endings are difficult. You have to choose to make it real, but not too dark. A dark ending will ruin the, the reader forever. <laughs> if you don't make another appointment on the side that there is still hope, please see this, there's hope. <laughs> and that would work on an ongoing scene, an ongoing series of stories. If you want to write, I uh, well, a season-long book and you want to write another season-long book, right after that, you have to choose your endings for the first, then you have the beginning of the second and then you will burst out into maniac laughter because you overwork yourself. <laughs> Just make it simple and f start with slowly little pieces of work. I can't emphasize this more. I have overworked myself with a plan of a story about three seasons long arc for one pony. And I will complete it eventually in three or five years. And I see it is very difficult to wandered off from the story to just write another one, which I tend to do a lot, because the inspiration strikes me when I never, ever experienced or wanted it, and so I just write another story who will slowly take 20 or 30 chapters, so I can write a little bit here, a li write a little bit there, and then I try to write the first story and sit there what are the characters all about? What is the meaning of this character? Why have I put it in? I don't have a clue. I don't have written down characters. I tend to make them, oh, it works. <laughs> and that's a very, very sad uh, feeling if you are, don't, are competent enough to realize you should really concentrate on one story and should try to write it down in one fair swoop. If you are writing multiple stories and thinking, whoa, what should be wrong about it, you can overwork yourself quite easily and don't realize you need to focus on one. A moral to teach. Well, that was a moral to teach, I guess. <laughs> Interesting characters. I have stated in the first art of writing that characters is that what the story is all about. And I have repeated this over and over and over again. Because characters is the most important thing besides plot design. If you don't have plot design, you don't have a character. If you don't have a character, you don't have scenery that they were experienced. So, Okay, sorry. The five eyes. We have... Where are they? Now, ah, inclusion. This is include your own experience into your story. It is the easiest sounding part. But... Where was I? Oh, there. But you shouldn't take it too much if you are just trying to emulate experience of yourself into the story. You are trying to write a self-insert into a pony world. The self-insert can work, I repeat, can work, if the reader is exactly like you. Is there a pony or a person who is exactly like you, besides a clone? No. If the reader is slightly different from you, they would enjoy it. I say quite though they would enjoy it, but I tend to write about canon characters with, with a spin, with a, with a twist, because I know every reader would enjoy this character because they are already knowing this character. They are knowing it because they have watched the show. 
So an OC is a nice addition, but uh, nothing will ever bring me to write a story about my OC. I wouldn't do it. It is a good way to start, to make experience about it, to see how the characters are interacting with a stranger, but I would recommend to write a story about a character which I grow accustomed to, which I would be personal attached to, like in some way, and make it a story about this character. How to draw the reader in, I have tried to explain. Character relatable, mm -hmm, believable character. The be believable character is different because, and difficult, <laughs> because you are having an aspect the vision of a character like Scootaloo. Every envisioned Scootaloo, I should drink more. <laughs> Everyone envisioned, envisioned <laughs> this sentence. Everyone envisioned Scootaloo in a slightly different way. And often, well, we can cross that off the list. <laughs> and child who is watched out by many other ponies because her parents are actually adventurous. Well, good. <laughs> um, so, how would Scootaloo react to a story like that? C currently, like she does in an episode. Mm. The inside of a character and interesting of the character is yeah, the last one I would or think. This one is different. If you are there are pity. <laughs> if you feel pity for a character, you will see a character which would who are suffering and you want to improve their life. You want to improve their life so badly, you will read it, you will hope that the character changed for the better, that the way of the character is treated changed for the better. That's why, though much, Scootaloo abuse or Scootaloo uh, hurting stories are quite popular. <laughs> if you are pity with a character, you will hope for, n for a nice change. What can I, what I can give, what I can give, I don't know what I have. <laughs> Introspection. We all know what Sweetie Belle is, is feeling right now. <laughs> so we can project our thoughts into the character. That's introspection. We know what the character is feeling. This is something you should address. If the reader want, if you want the reader to really feel about the character, Express it. Express it into the story. Express it in the story a lot. Where was I? Feelings. Well, yes. Motivation. The motivation of characters is also important. If the character has a different motivation from you, that's fine, because this motivation is personally for the character. The character has a different motivation than you, or than your C or other ponies. The goals of a character, a character and our goals are much different. Uh, the characters want to make a party, want to make friends. We also want to make friends, but we don't always want to make party. <coughs> Tasks, what kind of task do they did they character have. I can relate to those tasks. I can say a normal life is difficult in these times. So if a character like Sweetie Belle has a normal life, what kind of problems would they have? What kinds of things would they learn from it? So this is a very, very good fly. <clears throat> it's a very, very good um, insight of the characters. The characters there are learning different things. Sweetie Belle learns to express herself 
much more clearer than just frowning at the camera and Rarity has learned I should listen to my sister. Mm. Point of view, I should glance over that kind of story structure because point of view is always everything above that. What did I know? What did I know about the characters, about the situation, about everything the character experienced? Include Oh, that's what so bad. Sorry, I have. I'm. Hey, I'm sorry. Ah, insert. We can self-insert us. It's an easy but difficult part to insert yourself into the characters. Part of this, you can feel like you are part of the story if everything happened in a not singular way. So if I tend to write in a perspective like I would be like blah, 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 uh, or the character is the I character, I tend to write in a slight different kind of style because you can easily blend in but you have to experience in thoughts that are well kind of boring for me. I have started with a character who is over 30, over 3,000 years old and I have a ice perspective chosen to wrote though and it felt kind of boring to write everything down like, oh, the world is at peril again. I should do something again. This is, it drives me, it has, it has, it has driven me nuts over a part of 300 pages. <laughs> uh, intimate, just a product, yeah. I will glance over, 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 insert a little bit to s what? Oh, why? <sighs> there's, ah, I think there's something wrong with my editing. <laughs> Great. It's a perfect world, idealization. Yes, the pony world, it's more and more perfect than our world, but I tend to write it the other way around. <laughs> I tend to write it like it is a slightly different but also quite depressing state. It is an easy time into the pony world. It is everyone has his purpose stamped on his side. Everyone can know what he is supposed to do the whole time. Determination is kind of boring but also fulfilling. You can have a cutie mark in dust cleaning and can feel content to clean everybody's du dust around your corner. You can have a cutie mark in high operative magic and can also be depressed because your friend is going off to a school and you don't have any other friends. I don't know why but just write him. Um, everything can be fixed. This is a very, very good lesson that we should always take out this show and approach it for ourselves. We can fix everything. We can be positive, like the ponies. This is something I personally learned from that show. I say it is the most important thing. You can fix everything. You just have to start. Like story writing. You can write stories. You just have to start. You can make so many, dis so many mistakes like I do. I have done mistakes a lot. I have written terrible stories. I have written stories with no interesting characters. I have written scenery heavy stories that are so 
boring that I can't even describe how boring they are. But I have moved on. I have written more and more. And I feel confident that my stories are now better than they are back then. And I will, will see that my stories will be different and I will say better tomorrow or the year after tomorrow. Don't stop writing because someone says your story is bad or your story shouldn't be told that way. I tend to do that. I'm sorry. I make mistake to misjudge stories. I tend to make my own experience your experience. And this whole scene here, this whole panel is one thing to, you can do it. I say, I had said you should do it. You, you should do that. I am teaching, but the real process of learning or experience is your own. I can provide simple ways. I can provide thinkings. I can provide everything you want to experience in writing. But the journey is yours. I am just a person who is ahead the road. I am confident that every one of you can achieve and will achieve this on, her, on their own path on their own pace, not pass. <laughs> because in the end, the idea, the, idea, the idea behind that, that stories, that serial, that TV show, three, three tries, <laughs> I'm glad you're patient, the, the idea behind that TV show is about communication, is about friendship. And so, so are our interests in it. We are here to talk about one aspect, fan fictions. And that is my favorite hope. This world is hopeful. And our world should be too. So our stories are a vehicle, are a side to make those stories hopeful. And that's the time to be again to drove over the I am capable to do everything, just do it. Well, oh, that's a little bit clumsy. Tell me what I don't want to hear. This is something, an idea, wherever the hack Discord put that idea approach. There should be an, an, an aligning over there to tell you that's an idea, but I don't see it, so this got must jinxed it. <laughs> oh, oh, there, there it is, right, thanks. <laughs> ah, this god has hide it. Yes, yes, I have to improve my speed a little bit. So, uh, tell me what I don't want to hear. This is something I would always try, but don't overdo it. I don't want to hear sad stories anymore. Uh, hard times relatable characters make it easier for the, um, for the reader to adjust the hard times. You can address hard times, you can address illness, you can address death, but the characters must be relatable to bounce it off, off a little bit. Just normal people. Well, thanks Discord. We will continue with quick one sentence summaries. The one where Pinky knows. Yeah, I try to use GM Barrows 
uh, episodes. The one sentence summary about this, Pinky learns a secret and has to keep it to make another pony happy or some pony else. And that's the short thing an author can do. You can put the whole episode, the whole story you are writing into one sentence. If you do, you can focus on that theme of an episode or story. You can change it around. We have Granny's Gone Wild. Well, this is kind of easy. Rainbow Dash has to let go of her predicaments and should listen to other some pony to slower to some pony slower my dear to achieve her goal like that i will glance over the last one to benefits of the summary first of all it states the direction of your story perfectly. If you want to write a story about a war, picture a character and say, Apple Bloom goes to war. That's all. That could work. It also could terribly backfire. <laughs> um, second, it's easier to predict which goal of a story you have. If you have a goal like, Apple Bloom is going to war, you can write about 10 different stories about it. You can write a story about her family needs to let go of her to achieve a victory. You can have a hero sacrifice of her. You can have a gripping story of a filly who doesn't want to go to war, an escape story, a love story she fell in love with. I don't have a roll to die, so uh, the, the dice to roll, so I will say, Mod pie. <clears throat> and thirdly, you, can't, you can decide later to fit in even more motivation for the other or for the same character. You can make the, the summary longer. Apple Bloom is going to war and she has to miss out uh, Granny's funeral. This, this are two sentences. You can draw out the whole story in more and more sentences if you want to encompass more drama or more suitable characters, then you can always draw out this summary. Ah, that's uh, currently my editor. I think she's sorry about the mashup, um, but she could be Lucky, I can't be mad at her. <clears throat> so, why just why derpy? Okay, thanks for your time. And do you have any questions? Thanks. If I don't have a choice but to write multiple stories at once, do you have any tips for that? Uh, well, yes. Do it in your um, free time, <laughs> of course, and choose to write the ending first. If you want to write from one point of a story to another, write the ending first and you will float like a breeze to this point. If you want to change it, do it. Change the ending. But if you have an ending, you can always develop the story in that kind of area, in that way. Sorry? Um. <laughs> uh, what should one start with, the plot or the characters? Um, whatever inspires you. This is something you should try out. If you want to write an interesting story, try the story approach. I can't say I would start with a story or I would start with the characters. I have a clear vision of a character and start with a story. But I'm not you. I would say try both and see what fits you. 
um, the, the characters makes it easier to adapt it into a story because if you start with a character you know the motivation, the tasks, the, the goals and can develop the story from that point of view. If you start with a moral or the, the story, you can choose your character wisely to put it into the story. I'm sorry, I can't have, a, I don't have an answer for both. Kind so, of I'm, so I make the plot for the characters and the characters for the plot. Right, that's the way I would do it. Any more questions? Ah. Yeah, I have a question which will um, probably destroy your whole panel. Um, what if I am a panzer and if I don't want to make a plot or a plot outline but just sit down and start writing? What's, what's your, um, do you have some tips for those kinds of people, those crazy kinds of people who do that? Who just start writing, just continue. Just continue writing. You can't be wrong, I can be wrong to Pro propose such as so long going planning. There are gardeners. You can garden your story while you're writing. Um, I tend to do that the same, but I have planned out the whole thing in my head. Do what you want. I am not the judge. I am just a person who is standing here and try to entertain you and show you a, an, a light of a little bit of what I have experienced. So just write. That's the only thing every author should do. Yeah, thank you. Writing is very personal indeed. <laughs> uh, how can you combine something like MLP with a theme of war? Uh, war very good. Uh, uh, sorry, again? Uh, MLP is a rather peaceful universe, character, yeah. how could you make it work with a bloody thing like a war um, and, uh, yeah, sorry. and death and such? Um, like you are trying to... Uh, I have experience in role-playing game. You can mix up uh, universes like that and you can change the world in that matter. You can experience like what if Sombra won? We have already experienced that. That's a different kind of Equestria but it is also a war, a war turned Equestria. You have a war which is going on and on and drained out more and more ammunition, more and more ponies. So you have a very very dark setting but you have also ponies. You can also change it that like the film, a foreign country moves in and tries to evade, tries to everything, tries to enslave the ponies. So there will be a resistance group that will fight against it. You can have every kind of story you are capable of telling or you are capable of thinking. You can also have a very, very futuristic war of any kind. You can have a war of um, guns and powder and the stinking of trenches, of trench warfare with flamethrowers, with magics, teleportations like Pegasi are the bombers or everything you want to imagine. I will currently not reading it, <laughs> to be honest, but that's your story. You can write everything. The difficult part is to make the reader interested into your story. <laughs> <laughs> and I tend to be a very critical reader. Sorry. <laughs> uh, was that helpful? Yes, thank you. <clears throat> um, do you use any tools like spreadsheets to keep track of your characters or do you use any grammar tools like Grammarly? Um, for my German, I would choo uh, in my German stories, I choose to write it in open office and try to read it again. I don't use any kind of spreadsheets or everything else. No, I, I have it in my head, and that's kind of the problem I have already, as you can say. Um, I would use it, 
if I have the time to write everything of the character down to an existential degree, because I tend to change the characters like I want to, like I want to. Everything is possible, and so I change characters a lot, and I have them all in my mind, and hopefully I remember them correctly. <laughs> so I wouldn't recommend that kind of story writing. <laughs> especially if you are trying to write three or four stories at once. So I would definitely recommend using those wonderful sheets and uh, store them good away to improve your skills. I will try to do that on my own eventually <laughs> when I have time to write again. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> you again, please. Do you have any tips to not drift into writing the story, but to write the plot instead? That's a um, problem for a GM or DM. Ah, yeah, the, the role-playing part. I envision the story, try to make an end sometimes. Sometimes I just develop the story and this way and hope the characters will turn that way. If they don't, I can choose that they have turned that way for them. That's very, very sloppy, I will agree. But you can also make the choice and throw the characters in the right angle. You can choose to make a really, really big tree of this could be the one thing they will do or that or that, or you can say every branch of the tree is like a circle and goes to the same conclusion and you have the one conclusion and you have different kinds of rails above them and I tend to do that a lot. <laughs> but that was role playing and role playing is much difficultier than just write one story. Well, I think that's all. I think that's the first time I have ever accomplished it in less time than I have. So, <laughs> thanks. I hope you are finding it, you are, will enjoy it a little bit or even learn from it. But also, if you disagree with me, feel free so. I have just uh, nothing else to tell you. Thank you.